You have absolute control over um, how you shape the light simply by this incredibly messy, big, soft mask that is now dropping in the light in the scene. And you can see how natural this looks versus a typical HDR, right? It's not lightening up all the shadows. It's not uh, mu making muddy all my highlights. It's the best portion of each one of these exposures exactly how I want it. What's the main trick? The main trick, aside from a good old-fashioned layer mask, is this little advanced blending blend if dialog box, where you can say, please hide the portions of this exposure, in this case, what's underexposed. Just hide that, giving me this beautiful, luscious highlight detail with a perfectly buttery smooth transition to what's invisible, which is all the blacks here. Okay? It's called the advanced blending blend if sliders. You can actually set up an action, if you'd like, to automatically um, automate that process and give you a starting point, if you'd like. If you want to fine tune it, you can come up here and continue to fine tune your um, tone mapping. If we go, well, now, you know, I've got that. Looking at that, I actually could have set up that middle tone values that I'm using as the base. I could have, you know, done some more changes to it. But at this point, since the shape of my tone is basically the way I'd like it, at this point, I could then take it into my Adobe Camera Raw. Now, in this case, I've got two options. I can either do a merge visible copy of these three, so I'm working on all three of them at the same time with one flattened copy. Or remember that smart technology, that smart layer, which we did when we bring things in via merged HDR Pro, automatically becomes a smart layer. Um, Photoshop doesn't mind whether it's one image or multiple layers. If I select all three of these and right click and say convert to smart object, this now, even though it still has all three layers intact, and I can get back to it and fine tune that mask, right now if I come over here and do something like filter, it will treat all three of those as if it's one file. And the filtering that it's going to do, Adobe Camera Raw, will be non-destructive. I can change it, fine tune it, do whatever I want. So now I'm inside of ACR and I can do some overall global you know, manipulation. If I want to do a little bit more to my shadows, maybe want to do that little bit of clarity. Maybe if it's getting a little bit too warm, now I'm going to do a global changing of my white balance. I still do have my targeted adjustments. I've got my own brush here. So if I want to do a little pop, you know, this countertop, you know, this is a really expensive countertop. If I want to come up here and add just a little bit more to that in here, if maybe I want to make that, you know, glassware pop, I can, you know, add a little bit of clarity in there. So now I'm coming up and uh, doing that. This very expensive um, oven top here. So I can highlight those. Now I'm going beyond the shot, and now I'm interpreting. Now I'm telling a story where I'm wanting the people, if this you know, was a zillion dollar you know, set of lights up here, just tap. What am I doing? Just a little increase of exposure, a little bit increase of clarity. And now I am just you know, drawing the eye around the scene, whether it's a landscape or whether it happens to be, in this case, you know, an architectural rendering, um, I'm in complete control of it. So I took advantage of technology, the advanced blending, to bring in this beautiful amount of highlight detail on the outside, went to the edges perfectly smooth, and was able to paint exactly where I wanted it. And again, so now here's a little fine tuning of my tone map. I hit return, and again, this is non-destructive. If I needed to get back to those layers, what you do is you double click on the layer itself, it opens them up, I could fine tune it, I close this again, it comes back here and would reapply the filter. What's the technical term for that? Bitchin', I think it's bitchin'. Um, this is certainly not something that would typically be taught with uh, HDR concept because we're so used to this bracketed exposures and using the concept of this high bit depth image that you then have to, in a sense, compensate for the fact that it's pulling out all that highlight detail. Only, only a person, there's, only, there's no way that you could ever have an automated process that's gonna say, I want this highlight detail 
but I don't want this highlight detail. You can't do it, it's impossible, because it's the same tone, right? It, it has no clue, it's a bloody computer. How can I tell it that this is supposed to be shiny? This is, this is sand, it's the same value as this. This is shiny, it has to be shiny, it should be a specular highlight, this shouldn't be. So every HDR application is gonna bring in all the highlight detail, whether you want it here or don't want it here. And again, that will include every single specular highlight everywhere in the file. So at some point, doing some sort of manual compositing of your bracketed exposures will give you a much better result.